a lot has been said about Somali special vetting. You know, nowadays, <clears throat> I'm one of the people who have benefited a lot from social media. But again, social media has its own side effect. And also, we have this thing that called um, human rights. So Kenya has gone to an extent. Something happens, it goes over the social media, the whole world is burning. Then in two or three days it is left. Already an idea has been planted. Removing that, planting that idea is easy, but removing is very hard. Now Somalis are saying that they are being discriminated. The constitution says that uh, nobody should be discriminated upon on based on his tribe, religion, such and such. But this is how, what is happening. First of all, there, there, there are those people who are vetted differently. Even before, I participated in the Somali vetting. It happened in around the time when Oko died, 1989, 1990. That is when it started. But even before that, we have been having special vetting for people from the boundary. Yes, people from the boundary. Nowadays, it's a bit different. If you, if, 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 if you are of age, if you are of age and you go for the registration, you go to get an ID, they ask your home county. And if your home county bounders a neighboring country, then you have to go through special vetting. During my time when I was in the police service, oh, when I was in the police force, uh, it was written in black and white that if you are a Maasai, a Luo, a Somali, and others, you have to have special vetting. And if you belong to those tribes that I've mentioned, I've not mentioned all of them, because even though I have one of the best computers around, uh, called a necktop computer, uh, there are some things it cannot remember, all of them. Those days, during the time of police force, they mentioned tribes, Maasai, Luo, Somali, Borana, whatever. But nowadays, during the days of police service, they say if you come from counties that are neighboring other countries. So if you apply for an ID and you come from a, a county that is neighboring another country, there are many. Now, uh, if you are a Luo from Kisumu, Today, you don't get a special vetting. But during police force, if you are a Luo from Kisumu, you get a special vetting. Because Luos are in Kenya and Luos are in Uganda. But nowadays, during police service, a person, a Luo from Kisumu, is a Kenyan from Kisumu, and Kisumu borders no foreign country. But Siaya, and Busia, they border Uganda. So, if you are from Siaya, you are not vetted because you are a Luo. You are vetted because Siaya is boundary Uganda. The same applies to South Nyanza. The same applies to Busia. The same applies to Bungoma. The same applies to Transoya. So you find somebody from Moise Bridge. Yes, Moise Bridge. Moise Bridge is, it? In a, in a, is at the boundary of Transoya and, uh, and uh, Kakamega and Wasenigishu. So if you're from Moise Bridge, inside Transoya, you are vetted specially. 
But a person like me from Kaburengu, from Kaburengu to Uganda is, is near, but Kaburengu is in Kakamega, and Moise Bridge is in Transa. So you are vetted because your county bound us a foreign country. So we had reached uh, Transoya, West Pokot, Trukana. Uh, where else from Trukana we come to Marsabit. Nikiruka, I understand. Uh, Marsabit, from Marsabit we go to Wajer. From Wajer we go to Mandera. Mandera we come back to Garissa. Garissa, we go to Coastal, Kajiado, Taita, Taveta, uh, so on. So, it is done that because people from these counties, some of them have got two identification cards. One has one for the other country. We have others who have just decided to have one country. And then there is also that risk and whatever. So, where you may ask, why is it that a person from Kaburengu, Pali Matrela Zinanguka, you will ask yourself, why is it that a person from Kaburengu is a, a riding? You can ride a bicycle from Kaburengu to Uganda. Uh, you see these things uh, when they say that a neighboring country, a county with a neighboring country, uh, if they go for by kilometers, it will also be a challenge because. Um, so they just came with that. They can even come with kilometers, but you see it is a bit easier enforcing if it goes by counties. That one was there even before. Even when police are taking uh, fingerprints, uh, when we were recruits, and remember that was between November 82 and May, November 82 and May 83. We were being told in Kiganjo that uh, the falling tribes, now they have changed. It is not the falling tribes, but it is um, people from counties that bound neighboring countries. Somalis, if you are a Somali, like the former cabinet minister, uh, Madam Amina, the former uh, inspector general, uh, I've forgotten his name, Major General Hussein, yeah, uh, they are Somalis from, uh, the cabinet secretary is a Somali from Kakamega. So she coming from Kakamega, she cannot be vetted, specially vetted. And uh, Major General Hussein is a Somali from Wasiningishu Kitale, so he cannot be vetted. The vetting of the police service is vetting people from the counties from the boundary. And the vetting of the police force was for the tribes, Somalis, Maasai, you name them. So that is what happened. That is what happened. And we have to get that clearance. But then we also had special clearance for Somalis in 1989. And I want to tell you, it was a sincere thing. There is, if, if, you are, if you trust me, if you trust me, and you see some of us, <laughs> Mume trust, you have trusted us, you have trusted me for so long that I take extra caution not to mess now so that you doubt the past trusts you have had of me. This is what happened. And there, there was even two brothers, two twin brothers, who went to Sandhurst. One was sent by the Kenya army, and the other one was sent by the Somali army. Now, I have two sons. <laughs> now, imagine one son is called Ben, assuming. Of course, I have a son called Ben. Now, he goes to Sandhurst called Ben Huatenge. And I have another son called Japheth. He goes to Sandhurst as Captain Huateng. Both Japheth Huateng, Ben Huateng. Both are my sons. But you see, one has a, a go, is taken there by the Kenya army, and the other one is taken by Somali army. So at Sandhurst, they, and they were twins. 
they were uh, captain as so they were saying captain Hwatenge the Somali captain Hwatenge the Kenyan so there was need to and you see when it comes to such things it is a risky security wise today when a kid reaches an age they said you go and get an ID for one of the parents something like that but you see how how do you get ID for chokoras I don't know but I find that. But what used to happen during those days, we had a committee of elders. I remember even personally asking Somali intelligence officers that, um, you see, intelligence is, use, is uh, reasoning with the intelligence. That, uh, why, why is it that? Because if you give evidence, if today I was to give evidence in, and I've given a lot of evidence, parliament, court, everywhere, the first time I, 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 I took an oath, the first time I took an oath, if the court susp susp adjourns the proceedings to another day, and we meet on another day after the court, has, after the court or the parliament has adjourned, I continue with the evidence. But that is the good thing about NIS, is that um, you may be the director general of NIS, but the person of the lowest rank can give you an expert opinion. So yes, there I was, a very senior officer. But I was asking a corporal, a Somali corporal, why is it that every time this committee, this vetting committee needs, they have to take an oath again. And I remember Abdikadir telling me, that is the name of the corporal, was telling me that uh, according to his opinion, if, you, if, if the committee met on Monday and took an oath and then had a three-hour session, then went away, came back on Friday, uh, the psychological effect of the oath does not affect the person. So every time they have a session, even if it takes two hours, uh, apart from maybe... Uh, health break or lunch break or whatever but if the the vetting committee sat today and broke to come back tomorrow psychologically they are bound to to be more sincere if they gave uh if they took if, if they partook another oath and how was this uh, uh, committee found what we did is that we had all those clans represented. For a lack of a better uh, example, let me take, for example, in Narok. Narok, we are doing vetting. We could have Syria clan send a representative, Moitani clan send a representative, Purko clan send a representative, Wasiningishu clan, send a representative, Matapato clan, send a representative. Hey, bana. My laptop, <laughs> my neck top, Imeanza. So, all these people are there. They are elderly. And they're not just elderly. We used to select people, especially those who were the religious, religious leaning such that uh, if we were to go to Kawangware, to Natafuta, pastor wa divine, pastor wa salvation, pastor wa PhD, we get all of them together, and then they are sworn in, and they are from different clans and subtribes and whatever. And if my, if, if my necktop computer is, is not wrong, Whatever that committee d d decided, whatever that committee decided was final. There was no government body, be it in Mandera, because I was in Mandera, be it in Mandera, be it in northeastern Garissa, or be it in Nairobi, could overturn what those elders who are also religious leaders had decided. Uh, maybe the only problem that was having, those days, you know, the identity, ID cards of those days, you would go to a place, then in the 15 minutes I've been talking, you have your ID. But nowadays, they have what you call waiting card. So do, during those days, 
a Somali after after being vetted he or she would not just go straight and get the ID he or she would be given something similar to a waiting card of today and then the report would be taken to us at the district we would take the report to the province in Garissa and Garissa would take to the national office in Nairobi then but I have said that whatever the elders had decided, because the old elders were there, I talked of Maasai elders. Let me talk of the Somali. There is a Gare there. There is a, an Ogaden there. There is a Degodia there. There is an Ajuran there. Name them. They are all there. And those elders, they make a decision. When they make a decision, uh, they agree. According to me, if my desktop computer is 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 hijangiliwa na virus, is that they really disagreed? They really <laughs> disagreed where you say, "Nini maragoli bwana tulivetu watu wenyu wengi apa na nini bukus?" Ah ah, they totally they used to agree, and I don't remember if there was any disagreement. Then it was so minor that we had even forgotten that. I felt that there was need for me to clarify that. That special vetting is there. Uh, and I, I was, the other day I was at uh, Dagoreti uh, sub-county headquarters and uh, I, was, I was educating those uh, young Kenyans who take ID. And I was telling them, imagine a person like me from Kaburengu do not need vetting. But a person from Pan Pepper, Pan Pepper, the paper mill, needs vetting. And you know how long, how far Pan Pepper is from Kabrengu? It is like from Nyayo Stadium to Uhuru Park. Now, a person from Nyayo Stadium is not vetted, but a person from Uhuru Park is vetted. I thank Kenyans for accepting for me to. Uh, be a honorary history teacher, kindly check that uh, till number.